When I'm explaining my work to people, I often use the, uh, the image of a detective. But we're not looking for murderers, we're looking for traces of chemicals in our environment. Hi, I'm Emma Szymanski. I'm an environmental chemist and engineer uh, and an FNR Attract Fellow at the Luxembourg Centre for Systems Biomedicine. In my research, I'm trying to identify the unknown chemicals in the environment uh, to ensure the safety of our environment and also their associations with health and disease. Many people remember chemicals uh, from the periodic table and on the periodic table you can see we've got some very simple elements like uh, oxygen uh, which forms uh, the air we breathe obviously, hydrogen and oxygen together form the water, but uh, other combinations of elements can form these uh, many many millions even billions of chemicals we cannot even enumerate. So what you see here, the largest chemical databases currently have over 180 million chemicals in them. And of these, about 350,000 are in high use. That means they're being used in tonnage amounts. The vast majority of these 180 million, even these 350,000, we don't know much about. Then the added challenge to this is, especially the pesticides like this, they can, when they hit the environment, they can transform. So they lose little bits and pieces. So here, this will transform to an oxygen. So the chemicals uh, change their identity, which makes it even harder for us to find. Uh, so this 180 million, this doesn't even count all the transformation products. So you can just imagine how many chemicals we're dealing with. In routine monitoring, we actually only measure tens to hundreds of chemicals. But as we've already said, chemicals transform, uh, new chemicals come onto the market, so 350,000, our regulatory lists are tens to hundreds. So you can already have a guess, <laughs> there's several orders of magnitude difference between them. So the methods we're developing is really to look without necessarily looking at the chemicals, we just look at what's in there and then try to use our methods to say, okay, what's in there that's also dangerous. So chemistry always fascinated me, even as a young child. When I was graduating from school, uh, uh, I was recommended to do both chemistry and engineering uh, to give a bit of uh, variety. Um, this was one of the best pieces of advice I got. So I, I carried out uh, both studies. I even worked as an environmental engineer. And it was actually when we were doing one of our complex contaminated site uh, investigations that uh, we were holding the sample in a hand. It was like the most contaminated sample we've seen. And it was so clear to us that there was a problem here, but according to the regulation, it was fine. And this is what stimulated me to go, there has to be a better way to do this evaluation because this is clearly not protecting environmental health. One of our biggest parts of our work is prioritizing all of these chemicals, right? There's no way we can investigate 180 million and come with reduction technologies for that. What we want to do is classify the results that we have, find the most relevant ones. Can we find out what industry it's associated with? Can we stop people from using these chemicals? Can we maybe come up with an alternative that's better for the environment? If they transform, is the transformation product good or is it bad? Um, this is what we look at. So we collect a sample or we uh, receive a sample from our collaborators. We then go to the lab, prepare the sample, make an extract of it, make it ready to uh, put into the mass spectrometer. Then we get the, the fingerprints of the masses with time and then the fund starts uh, trying to assign chemical identities to all of the masses that we've found. So as you can see in the picture here, the mass spectrometer is actually taking a fingerprint in time and each of these points here telling us the mass of the chemical. So this is the fingerprint of, uh, of the chemicals that are in our samples so that we can identify. The technology to measure the samples is great and it's improved a lot in, in the last couple of decades, let's just say. And the data analysis is actually currently the bottleneck for the entire environmental chemistry. Uh, so we can often acquire a sample in 20 minutes or even less, but the data analysis is taking people days to months. So what we're trying to do is really get the data analysis also to within the time or even less uh, that it takes to measure the samples. One of the issues that has held back chemistry for a while is that a lot of this information was closed. Uh, so 
when you register a chemical, this information goes into a registry that is then hidden from people. So we as environmental chemists have to then go through guesswork to find out which chemicals are the problem. So for me, I've been funded by public money, especially from the FNR now, um, but also in previous work. Um, and it's important to me that this goes back to the public, that my information is not closed off, that our methods are out there. So we put a lot of effort into open source software and connecting the dots between different methods so that we can identify what are the chemicals that are likely to be a problem, so that more people can use this information to, to solve the problems or uh, generate insights into health and disease, because it's clear now that genetics only alone only explains about 10% of all diseases. Uh, so we suspect that chemical uh, is part of this story as well. We have collaborators all over the world, so PubChem uh, is probably one of our major collaborators at the moment. We have a very big European network, so the Norman network, this is not just uh, scientists, it's also regulators, uh, many people from Europe, but now also internationally. What's also important for us is our smaller collaborators, let's just say, uh, so working with uh, individual cases, uh, working with researchers trying to answer a certain question that they can't answer with the current tools, working with regulators who have seen this mass that they really want to solve and they don't have the time to do it, but we need the methods to make it easier for them. The question of whether they're harmful or good is, uh, is obviously very important. We can do uh, exposure tests to uh, either cells like yeast that are very well documented. You can do a whole lot of genetic knockouts to follow up different hypotheses. We can also use zebrafish. So zebrafish embryos under a certain time, they're not an animal test. Uh, what's nice about the zebrafish embryo is they're translucent. Um, they develop very early on, so you can actually see the developmental stages happening and they have a surprisingly large overlap with the human genetic system. So this makes them a very interesting model. We can get very sensitive measurements of the metabolic pattern and, uh, and find out which chemicals are actually influencing. So for me, the FNR Attractor Fellowship was a great opportunity to set up my own group. The funding gave me the freedom to pursue the questions that we thought were the most relevant. You have to say with Luxembourg as well, the small area of the country also really helps uh, establish the network quickly. So all of the researchers are in a rather contained area. What for me was highly attractive with the LCSB was both the computational aspect with the bioinformatics core, uh, but also this health connection because we've been so focused on environmental chemistry. I knew I had to also get out of my own comfort zone and start to find out more about the biomedicine we don't pay so much attention to. I hope personally what happened is that this non-targeted screening becomes the way that we can look at the environment uh, so that we can get it in regulation, so that you can take this broad overall view and then see if there's an, a problem and actually stop the contamination. So that in 10 years time I'm doing a completely different research field and you, you're already like, yeah, non-target analysis, this, was, <laughs> this is not a problem anymore.